my general fear, the language requirement then is used to masquerade racist tendencies. Right. Uh, I totally disagree with that you know, because language has nothing to do with race. A Malay, for example, can go to a Chinese school. So, you but know, that's in the minority level. Uh, I, I know, but the thing is that we, we cannot actually put people in straight jacket and say that since you are having this requirement of language, so your company is labelled as racist. Ketua untuk perbualan sama-sama, pertama, mendengar secara berempati, kedua, berkongsi dengan ikhlas daripada pengalaman diri anda dan nombor tiga, menerima pendapat orang lain dengan terbuka. Ingatlah untuk memberi ruang kepada semua orang untuk berkongsi. Dalam setiap kad, ada satu penyertaan dan jika kamu setuju, kamu akan hidup. Jika tak setuju, jangan hidup. Senyataan pertama. Saya pernah kehilangan peluang pekerjaan atas sebab kaum atau bahasa saya. So I feel it's contextual, it depends. If you are saying that I need a Bahasa Malaysia book being translated, for example, and you would say that I would prefer that guy is very conversant in Malay. Same thing with Chinese as well. If you are doing something about Chinese uh, culture, you might feel more comfortable trusting a person who is in that culture already. Upon graduating, I applied to many places and I usually either apply through Job Street or I just send them like a, a, a cover note email, attach my resume. Well, they, they were happy with my resume and they pro but then they proceeded to ask, okay, uh, what's your race? And uh, this is an Indian, Malaysian, Indian, and then they were like, oh, sorry, not interested. I shared the same experience as well after SPM where I was uh, looking for a part-time job, right? Um, where my place uh, predominantly certain race where all the job um, advertisement, uh, they didn't say that someone who can speak Mandarin, but rather said, um, I need Chinese. So from my end, I don't even bother to actually apply. There's some sort of hesitance or some sort of like, you know, afraid of like, like why trying. you yourself through? Yeah, exactly. So I think, yes, I understand that in terms of business setting, you need those kind of requirements, but in general, where people go to part-time jobs, they cannot. So I would like to say that there are certain circumstances whereby it's valid to have the race or language inside there. I also want to say that um, in your own organization also, you might want to be able to say that uh, my company's uh, main language of email is Malay or in Chinese. And if you cannot read the email that's coming through, then it's going to be a problem. And therefore, it's okay to say, you know, it's preferred that you are, you can speak this language or that language, per se. For me, professionally and personally speaking, I don't think um, race and language should be a main criteria towards um, any job applications or even if you want to seek for a tenancy untuk rumah sewa, I don't think that should be a main criteria for you to look for a candidate because race is something that is impossible for someone to change. Majikan yang memasukkan kriteria kaum dalam iklan pekerjaan adalah rasis. Get a half a sip for was was. <laughs> sometimes in, in companies there's a culture in that company, and sometimes unfortunately that culture depends on the race. I, I've been in a company, I've interned in a company where everybody 95% of the company was Indian, and everybody spoke in Tamil, and if it, it was very difficult. I'm sure in that company to bring in a person who doesn't speak the language where everybody communicates freely in Tamil and the person coming in and they don't really understand day to day. I mean, emails were in English, yes, of course, but the communication, you need to work in a team. Teamwork is very important. And sometimes, team, unfortunately, there's a race. If everyone is a certain race, you wouldn't want to disrupt that culture. You wouldn't want to disrupt that teamwork. I think it's just companies thinking I should not have another person from a different race. It might disrupt the culture and they don't want to take a chance on that. There is that sort of ambiguity in that sense because it can be abused. You know, you, it, you, employers can say that, oh yeah, that's language requirement. So, um, we only take Chinese speakers or Tamil speakers or whatever. But then again, if it's abused, um, I think the ambiguity is there because what if that person is like a Malay who can speak, who can speak Mandarin? If you still don't take that person, then we know. Like, that, that's like a double-blind test. 
then we know for sure you are racist. If we are going for like a globalized, a globalized nation, right, or a globalized market, I feel like um, everybody should be treated equally because you should be looking at an individual to what they can offer, what contribution you can benefit, not just yourself, not just for the individual itself, but for the firm, for the company itself. Because, you know, if somebody is brilliant enough to bring something good for you on to the table, you will reap the, um, what do you say, what you saw lah. Sama-sama, together, right? So, sama-sama, yeah. Can I just, like, get a feel of the, the table here? As, especially the, um, the three of the opposing side. Do you guys believe or do you, do you think that language can in any way be used as a, raci uh, as a racist tool? Yes. Yeah. So therein lies my general fear that the language requirement then is used to masquerade racist tendencies. Right. Uh, I totally disagree with that you know, because, you know, language has nothing to do with race. Yeah. I mean, uh, a Malay, for example, can go to a Chinese school. Chinese school can go to sekolah 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 Melayu, thing like that, and and of course you but know. But that's in the minority, though. I, I know, but the thing is that we, we cannot actually put people in straight jacket and say that since you know you are having this requirement of language, then so so your company is labelled as racist. I totally disagree with that because like I say that 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 language requirement serve a particular purpose. Why the company want to have a particular language proficiency? for them to deal with their client, prospective, uh, you know. Yeah, but, but his question was, can it be misused? Yeah. I, I don't think so it can be misused because perfectly legal for a company yeah. to request for a certain thing to be done in certain language. But I feel like in those advertising in jobs, right, those job advertisements, you should say, um, why do you need, rather than just simply say, oh, I just need a Mandarin speaker. You should say like, this require you to interact with client who is based in Hong Kong or Taiwan in China. And then we need you because um, that's the mode of um, communication. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. This, this kind of companies that start to put uh, race and language, of course, they can be taken to task. Someone need to monitor and say, okay, look, why require this particular language requirement, for example? Of course, if someone, a company say, I, I just must uh, employ a Malay only, for example, then I, I said earlier, the company should be hauled up, yeah? The Iklan Pekerjaan, I think, needs to have more context. Like, okay, if they want to put Mandarin speaker, you need to tell why. Yeah, yeah you just find it. Next one. Yeah. I thought you want to read this, Dato? Saya pernah merasa diskriminasi atas syarat Iklan Pekerjaan. Like I said before, lah, where I wanted to apply for a job, where the minimum requirement is you need to be Chinese, you need to be uh, Indian, I felt discriminated just by looking or just by reading the requirement, not even apply yet. This kind of feelings or this kind, this kind of like, how to say, hesitance shouldn't be there in the first place. Let me just say, when I see Chinese speaking preferred, uh, it also affects me because I don't speak Chinese. I don't write Chinese also. Okay. But I, I don't think I've ever felt so much discrimination because I just assume that, oh, it must be important for the job and then I just move on. But having heard some of the views here, I think I can see your point of view of why it would you feel that it's discriminatory per se. And I think some of the suggestions that came up about explaining why actually really helps. Yeah. Uh, because even though, I mean, I never felt discriminated against, although I was eliminating myself from a lot of jobs because of the fact that I don't speak Chinese, um, it's just a matter of uh, how that person perceives it. And if you actually educate why, I think you actually help shape that perception quite well. Okay, do you wanna, do you wanna read? Majikan patut memberi pertimbangan kepada semua calon berdasarkan kemampuan tanpa mengira kaum atau bahasa. I think everybody agrees, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I drank a lot because I'm thirsty, not because. <laughs> <laughs> Tidak wajar untuk tuan rumah memilih penyewa berdasarkan kaum. Uh. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have enough time to discuss that? <laughs> In terms of rental per se, I have a personal experience where I was um, rejected from um, finding or renting a room mainly because I'm a M Malay. Uh, let, let me be really upfront here. Of course, to say that you want to uh, rent out your property based on race or kaum, I think it's not fair. Yeah? But, but if you say that I want 
only certain uh, religion, that I think is a fair requirement. So, say for example, if you are a Muslim and, and you have a property or house to be rented, then uh, you say that you tend to say, hey, look, I, I want only Muslim to actually uh, you know, rent my property. Why? Because if a, a non-Muslim is being accepted to, to, to rent the house, and when actually this particular tenant vacate the house, then you as a house owner need to actually cleanse the house again, which is going to be very messy. It's not going to be easy to be done in that matter. So Datuk's point is, uh, if it's religion, it's, it's fine. If it's, it's racist, it's, it's about it's a race is not. Because, because like a, a, a Muslim can come from any kind of race at all. It's, it's not just necessarily Malay or certain certain other race. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we see even now you go online and you check the ads. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna say a lot of ads. Unfortunately, says Chinese only. Or... Yeah. And even if you you will search on Muda, there's a search option there. You know, <laughs> you can, yeah, you can search whether the property they allow all ethnicities, Malay, Chinese, Indian. Yeah, you can pick. From my experience, when I was living with the local British people, um, one of my flatmates, um, she's a Somali British which is she's a Muslim like me. So we were like, oh, we're, we're both Muslim girls. So we actually discussed with our flatmates, saying like, so, okay, we have this dietary requirement where we can't have any pork or lard. So they said, it's fine. So the top ladder, the top, uh, so the fridge can and the freezer, they say, you girls take the top part because we might need to have some some things that you can't have. And then I actually, uh, we have that sabun to sertu, you know, for Muslim, we have like uh, to, to bersihkan, like if we can, uh, um, pork or non-halal items, I say, it's okay, you use that one. I have a method, never mind. So I feel like, I think how I live with my friends um, is a nice example that this shouldn't be happening. Be it race or religion, we can live peacefully. I was originally from Johor. I got a job in KL when I wanted to move in KL. There are a lot of um, cheap options, but they require Chinese only or Indian only. That is when, when I try to apply and then when I um in a way there's no reply at all. Uh, because um I think those cheap option or those I would say good option are shut down for me. Um in my belief um I think instead of setting a kaum or religion or certain things, you better put like rules and regulation that you need to follow. Meaning you cannot cook non hala food or whatever it's easier that way because we know whether our practice of daily routine affects by the rules or not. Rather than just shut the door saying, um, or only Muslim. Because in that sense, you are putting a stereotype where all Muslims are clean or Chinese are clean, which is not true. No, just have that initial conversation. At least try to interview the, the yeah, tenant. Interview the tenant. Know. Get a feel of what. Yeah, I mean, if, they, if, like, you if you don't feel like it's the right one, then you have the right to say no. But don't put a... A, a stop yeah. at you know just because they're from a different race yeah, even if you say like indians only and you know you get an indian person staying and he could be the messiest person in the world exactly kaum minority paling terjejas oleh kriteria kaum di pasaran pekerjaan atau harta tanah saya tak bersetuju dengan kesetaraan berkenaan kerana dari segi realitinya in 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 fact in and in practice Basically, it is the minority races that actually control Malaysia's economy. And in terms of employment opportunities, they are the one that control the employment opportunities and also uh, on, on properties, things like that. So they are the one who put up conditions that are based on race or based on language, things like that. And of course, at the end of the day, the majority race is the one that actually suffered. Because they say they cannot speak Mandarin, they cannot uh, speak uh, some other languages, things like that. So, so that I think is the reality, not, not uh, the, what the statements say, but it is the reverse of it, it is happening in the market really. Um, I would have to disagree with what you said, Dato, because um, I think um, in terms of like share of the economy and, and, and that, yes, there's a race caveat to it, but only because we impose that racial caveat. If you were to look at it purely in terms of the rich and the poor, then I think in that sense, if you are B40 or uh, even on the lower end of the M40 scale you, and you are a minority, it's disadvantageous to you as well, Most, more disadvantageous to you. The whole reason why there's, an, uh, there's a feeling that the minorities 
actually stake a larger control of the economy is that is purely a rich versus rich poor dichotomy. Actually, after listening to that, I'm gonna drink. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always felt certain types of uh, aspects of racism were there, but when hearing from their standpoint, I somehow feel now that I'm able to appreciate those aspects more. So for example, how different things that are being said in job advertisements, it really matters and it really, really uh, speaks to the fact that we should be more uh, mindful when putting up uh, job advertisements and things like that. Banyak orang sering bersikap racist, tapi mereka tidak menyedarinya. Uh, di sini, I think memanglah fakta uh, yang kita harus terima uh, kerana kita sebenarnya tak begitu peka tentang apakah yang dipanggil sebagai racist. I agree. I agree fully because I think very few people, no matter how racist they are, will ever say that I'm a racist. They, they won't say that. Nobody says I'm a racist, ever. I think a lot of people are racist in Malaysia. They just don't want to admit they are or they give themselves excuses. But sometimes they just don't know it. You know? But should you like come on them really hard? I, I mean, if you want to change people, you don't you don't quickly disenfranchise them and label them racist. You know, just because you don't know, you attempt to educate them, and then if they, uh, you know, if they push back to that education, then maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's all about environment. What environment they were. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of exposure dealing with other races. They're most less likely to be racist. Yeah. That's the main thing. You know, you should start in schools. You should start in, in educating the younger generation because. The older generation, I think, is going, I don't know what we can actually do to change that mindset. <laughs> Your whole life, you've been like that, you know? But the younger generation, how do you teach kids in school that you should not look a, as a person, you should look at a person without looking at their race, without look, you know, stereotyping things like that? So I think it's important that we have more conversations like this in order for us to create a better understanding of each other because communication is the key for unity. Saya suka bekerja atau tinggal di persekitaran berbilang kaum. I think do twice. Yes. <laughs> I like this I one. Up, yeah. <laughs> I like this one so much. Yes. 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 I think just working and staying, that's what Malaysia is. It's all about the races, all about staying, being exposed to everyone and Tinggal di persekitaran berbilang kaum is lagi best because if kenduri, if yes. anything, yeah. that Deepavali, Chinese New Year, Hari Raya, you get free food. Christmas, <laughs> all that you get. Yes. <laughs> Ideally, this should be the situation where we live in a multi-racial society. And so, we, our, our, the place that we stay also should be reflective of what we are, basically. But unfortunately, I'm talking about unfortunately, this is not how Malaysia is being designed. I agree. I mean, I looked at uh, I've looked at how how Singapore does some of its things, especially HDB flats. They have actually got racial quotas for each HDB flat, so they make sure that each HDB flat is not like a Chinese HDB flat, a Malay HDB flat. It's going to be like this bunch of HDB flats needs to have Chinese, Malay, and Indian, Chinese, Malay, and Indian, Chinese, Malay, and Indian, so that through the interactions when you go to a lift or you go to a supermarket nearby, you are forced to actually mix with your, 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 your people and your neighbours nearby. And, and I mean, that the sorts of, uh, it's a good first step, I would say, in making sure that people are much more integrated. I like that conversation earlier, and I think that can be replicated more across uh, this country, because these are sensitive topics, I understand. But the fact that ground rules were set up beforehand, and we all agreed that these are what we should talk about, and this is how we should talk about it freely and openly. I think those type of things really matter in creating a safe space where we're able to talk about these uh, sens sensitive topics. I think what is important is uh, basically for the authorities to really have a good look at this issue. Really, it is started, uh, you know, the, the very day you are born because you're always categorized as Malay, Chinese or Indian. And this goes on until you even you go to university and you apply for a job as if race has to do a lot with, with uh, whether you should be employed or not employed. To me, it is immaterial. I take a very, very pessimistic approach to laws in general because I feel like that seems to be the immediate fix for anyone because it's an easy argument to make. You know, what, what do you do to stop violence? Law. What do you do to stop 
uh, theft, law. What do you do to stop racism? Law, law, law. But it's not going to work in, uh, in the long run, I would say, because inherently, there is a cultural problem, there's a mindset problem that needs to be addressed before any law would work. I really like this discussion today and I hope that this kind of discussion could happen elsewhere, especially between generation, between races or between anyone who wants some sort of like broader perspective on life. Even though we came from different backgrounds, different beliefs, different cultures, we can actually stay united and then, you know, agree on some issues and disagree on some issues. But in the end of the day, we are still Malaysians. We are still one. Right, so how do you guys feel about what? I like this section. Yeah. yeah. This, this should be aired in TV3 or TV1 <laughs> kind of thing. Right?